All right. Um, so, hello, everyone. I believe we have started. Um, I'm just going to clarify before we continue. Um, let's see. One second here. All right, so thank you so much for everyone uh, for joining our webinar today. Uh, this is the first uh, in a series of webinars that we are doing here at Informed, really around banned substance testing, sharing more information on our programs in our testing and speaking with uh, professionals in the industry on why it is important to not only industry professionals, but all supplement users. Uh, okay, so today uh, I'm speaking with Jamie Meeks. Uh, she is the Director of Sports Nutrition for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Jamie has really been um, a huge resource for me and the Informed team over the years on really helping us build our program um, to, to provide a benefit to athletes and dietitians. So um, Jamie, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and Thanks if you want to provide just a, yeah, thank you so much. And thank, if you want to provide just a brief overview of just um, your background and um, you have a pretty unique background. So I think uh, the audience would love to know a bit more. Yeah, sure. So currently, like you mentioned, I do work for the New Orleans Saints and I was actually born and raised here in New Orleans. So you really don't see that a lot um, in the league and really in sports to where you're working for a team in the city that you grew up in. So I'm pretty fortunate to be here and um, have family around me. But when I started, I guess, being interested in nutrition, it started my senior year of high school. I was getting ready to try out for LSU cheerleading. And my first coach I ever had as a child, she wanted to bring me to a dietitian and, you know, just to make sure that I was eating right, eating enough, you know, eating for not only health, but also performance and she went with me to this uh, meeting with this dietitian, and I really wish I knew who this dietitian was. But from that meeting, it like changed my life. It changed what I wanted to be when I grew up. When I grew up, so I literally went back home. I had already been um, accepted into LSU, so I changed my major and into dietetics, and that's how I started. And I knew I wanted to work with fitness industry athletes somehow some way i didn't know it would actually be something like this i i just knew i wanted to work with fit healthy athletic people so throughout my four years of undergrad i kind of kept kept with that idea i did my dietetic internship in little rock arkansas at uams and then from there i decided to go back to lsu and get a master's degree in exercise physiology, just to you know, really increase my knowledge of the exercise portion of, I guess, the nutrition side as well. So um, I had passed my RD exam right before I started grad school. So I, during grad school, I went to the athletic department and told them, hey, I can volunteer my time as a dietitian to provide consults to your athletes, you know, whatever y'all may need, because they didn't have a dietitian on staff. So um, they were all for it. So I did a bunch of consults and then it grew into some team talks. And then I had the idea, me and my advisor had the idea of putting together a business plan for the athletic department to hire a full-time dietitian. And so I worked on that throughout my last semester of grad school and presented it to them. And uh, once I graduated, they, they hired me on full-time. So that was about 2011 and I worked there until 2000, spring of 2015, when the Saints called, said they wanted to hire their first full-time dietitian. Um, they've had dietitians uh, before um, as in a consultant role, um, but they were ready to have someone there full-time and uh, did the interview and then learned I was coming back home. So spring of 15 up until now, so I'm, this is my ninth season with the Saints and loving it. Uh, the program has grown tremendously 
and um, still has a ways to go. So I'm excited. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I think that's just a great overview to provide to everyone watching on just uh, not only your experience, but just where you are currently in your career. Um, I don't know if I introduced myself. Um, so uh, along with Jamie here, I am Jeremy, uh, the Informed Marketing Manager. So really handling all of the marketing uh, for Informed. Uh, so definitely want to, like I said, reiterate uh, why we're doing the webinar and really focusing on the education around why banned substance testing is important, um, not only to us here at Informed, but more importantly to uh, athletes and uh, dietitians and coaching staff and of course the supplement brands who are providing their products to uh, to these athletes as well. So I know, um, Jamie, so really on banned substances, um, I can, you know, I always talk about the risks around banned substances and why it's important. Um, so what can you provide uh, any insight you have on why banned substance testing is important? Um, I always try to focus on like playing time or like there is a financial impact. Of course, there's impact on your reputation. Uh, we've all seen in the news, uh, any, you know, athlete uh, over the years has, you know, inadvertently uh, ingested a banned substance and it has resulted in then, of course, either they're being suspended or they're being fined or uh, maybe a, a championship was taken away, whatever it may be. So any insight you can provide on why it's important uh, to you and to the players you represent? Yeah, um, I would yeah. say first and foremost would be for health reasons. You know, some mm -hmm. of these uh, supplements that have banned substances in them could be really dangerous for your health, um, for your vital organs, your heart, your liver. It also could have interactions with medications that the person is taking and they may not realize. Um, so for for the first big, I guess, um, reason, it's going to be for health reasons. And then we get into the part of playing time. I know in the NFL, if you test positive, it is six games that you're suspended. And for those six games, that player does not get paid. And so if, if you don't know, in the NFL, the players get paid per game. So they have their their big contract, but they get their paychecks per game. So if a player is sus suspended for six games, that's six paychecks they're not getting, and that's a significant chunk of their income. So that's a big one. Um, and then you're also letting your team down. You know, you could be a really vital part of the game plan, and you know, you're taken out for almost half the season. So that's a big one. Um, you're going to get some negative publicity and you know that could last for short or long time um you know you could poten have potential legal battles and then also you, you can affect the trust of your coaches the gm your teammates um so there are some pretty negative consequences to taking something that has a banned substance so that's the reason why you really have to be careful of what you are taking Yeah, I completely agree. Um, we uh, we always focus on, of course, the like I guess the outward appearance of um, being uh, inadvertently uh, ingesting these banned substances. But as you said, that your health is first and foremost. And for most of the banned substances, um, we don't necessarily know how it could affect your body or your health when you ingest it. Um, so that is something that we always do try to drive home as well. We do have our informed sports supplement safety guide that will be provided to everyone on uh, attending. So you will be receiving that and it outlines, just as you said, all of the banned substances and their possible health effects and um, all of that that comes with banned substances. So how could a supplement be contaminated or how could you inadvertently ingest it by way of a supply chain or whatever it may be. So there, uh, that is something that I'm glad you focused on is that health is first and foremost, because if you're not healthy, then you obviously, you can't play and you can't, you know, perform to the best of your ability. So that's definitely important. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, with Informed Sport, you know, we are a third party uh, supplement testing program across the globe. We have uh, over 1400 certified products, you know, you can find around the world. So we definitely, um, you know, we, we focus on, you know, banned substance testing and really bringing clarity into the sports supplement industry. So, you know, 
what, when we're talking about third party certification, like why is it important to you, uh, your team, and really all athletes, whether you're professional level or you are, you know, working your way up there? Why is it important um, a third party a certification program like Inform Sport? Yeah, um, I think it's important for those who may not know that mm -hmm. there is a lack of regulation in the supplement industry. And that means that it's not completely regulated by the FDA. And so really any supplement company can make a product and sell it. Um, now, of course, there, the FDA does get involved, but that's after the fact, after someone gets sick or, you know, God forbid, dies from, from taking some sort of supplement. Um, that's when the FDA steps in. But before all that, you know, this supplement can can be on the shelf. So that's why it is very, very important to know what you are taking. Um, and when it when it's not regulated, it could potentially become contaminated with certain substances that you obviously don't want to take. And um, there's maybe some false label claims. The ingredients in the bottle might not match what's on the label and then also vice versa what's on the label might not match what's inside so that's something that's kind of scary when you're like oh well the label looks good and then in the factory there was some sort of cross contamination with a banned substance from another product that they were making and now your product is contaminated and then you get a positive test and then you know it all goes downhill from there so um like i said downhill from the you know lack loss of playing time loss of money and then also those potential negative health consequences and sort of uh, piggyback off what you just said um there a lot of times uh you may not know what is in a product even though it it is not on the label it could very well be in the product by just cross-contamination within the manufacturing process um that's something that we here at Inform Sport look at thoroughly before certifying a product. Every certified product, every single batch undergoes testing, but prior to the actual testing, we thoroughly review the manufacturer. We thoroughly review their raw materials lists to really provide that extra assurance that what is being put on the label is actually in the product. Um, and to like sort of on the supplement brand side, any brands who are attending today, even though you you yourself may not know that there is something in your product as well. We've ran into that several times over the years had, here at Inform Sport where a brand was also unaware that within the manufacturing facility, they were producing uh, products that had banned substances in them. So naturally there would be cross contamination in there. So uh, a, a part of Inform Sport certification is really reviewing that manufacturing facility and if they are producing any banned uh, products that may contain a banned substance, um, then putting out the necessary procedures to ensure that any contamination or cross contamination does not happen. So that is something that we definitely focus on here at Inform Sport as well, just with every um, every product that we certify. And so. Uh, we're talking a little bit about supplement brands, you know, in terms of their manufacturing this product or producing this product and selling it to, you know, maybe to you, your team, or to athletes in general, that's just their target market. So what recommendations uh, do you have for those supplement brands on why should they pursue certification um, like Informed Sport? Right. Um, it really can demonstrate that their product has gone through rigorous testing and mm -hmm. Um, making sure that it meets certain standards. Um, and this can improve the trust and the confidence of athletes, of dietitians, of teams, um, of those purchasing their products. So I think that's very, very important. I know, I know I, I'm one of those. <laughs> you know, you have to trust what you are um, potentially recommending to people. Um, and then also could help mitigate any legal or financial risk. Um, and then I think this is really important. It helps provide credibility. It helps provide transparency and also accountability of that company. Um, I think it could also help the athlete and dietitian uh, consumers uh, realize that this company is showing honesty and um, integrity of, of their products by doing this extra step to ensure that their products are completely clean. Yeah, and to go go along with that, um, I, there is a statistic that 71% of consumers 
are looking for a label of quality assurance. So when they are spending their money on a supplement, whether it's protein, creatine, a pre-workout, they are looking at the label, not only for the ingredients, but they are looking to see if it is certified or if it is tested. It is becoming a bit more apparent and people are becoming more aware of the need for that transparency. And like you said, it, it really helps supplement brands set themselves apart within the industry when they do certify with a third party uh, certification program like Inform Sport. So it's definitely a good way to bring that transparency and like just show your commitment to quality assurance. Right. So uh, more with athletes, um, we have recommendations for supplement brands on why they should certify, but a, a big part of what we do here at Informed is really helping educate athletes and the people that represent them. So the coaching staff or dietitians that represent them on why it's important to only use supplements that have been tested by a third party. Um, what recommendations uh, do you have for, for athletes um, in regarding uh, third party certified uh, supplements uh, in general? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I always start with, and this is nothing against the supplement brands because you know I do recommend uh, supplements all the time, but um, I really want the athlete to focus on food first. And let's take a look at your diet. What is your diet potentially lacking um, that could help with whatever their goal may be? And so sometimes, actually a lot of times athletes come up to me, and they're like, hey, I wanna take this, I wanna take that. And I think the first question should be, why? What are, what are we supplementing for? And sometimes they know, sometimes they're like, oh, well, my, my teammate takes it or a friend takes it or I saw celebrity XYZ take it and that really should not be the reason and um, but but you do hear that pop up a lot so I think focusing on their diet focusing on the big picture first and then potentially sitting down with them and look where there may be holes after um, a good assessment and then helping them decide if a supplement is needed so I think that's very important for athletes to realize that a supplement is not meant to uh, substitute for a good diet. You know, it's, it, it is what it says. It's a, it's a supplement. It's going to supplement a good diet. So make sure that you are focusing on your, your food and your diet and your nutrition and then supplement when needed. And correctly, um, I would say, under the guidance of a sports dietitian. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I don't know who where I read this or the, I there's just saying I might have just made it up, but uh, a supplement can't uh, a supplement cannot supplement a poor diet because, you know, we you know, we definitely we of course we test sports supplements here. But if your diet is not in check, uh, whether it's, you know, if you're if you're just not eating enough or if you're not trying to ingest enough food before you use supplements, then. It, you're still you're not going to see the effect that the supplement is supposed to have. So you're not going to see whether it's muscle growth or you want to stay energized. Do you want to recover? So you still may be feeling, uh, I guess, feeling it a bit if you do not really prioritize food, because um, I mean, food is food is everything. You have to you have to uh, prioritize that first in your diet before you really uh, look at. Uh, using supplementation in any way yeah. yes absolutely so uh, along with athletes uh, we do have uh, several dietitians here today which is great you know to be able to learn a bit more from you what recommendations would you have for them when they are talking to supplement users or athletes or representing a team uh, of sorts what what recommendations would you have for them regarding supplement use or just in general any recommendations that you would have for them yeah, I, I would say number one, first and foremost, is start with asking questions and gaining the trust of that athlete. Um, the way to not go about it is say an athlete comes to you with a question about a certain supplement or even a, a, a fad diet, whatever it may be, that they saw on TikTok or Instagram or so-and-so is doing it. Do not respond with, that's dumb, that doesn't work, absolutely not, because they're just gonna turn around and walk away because they're like, well, she's not gonna listen to me. So 
ask questions, say, okay, where'd you hear that from? Oh, interesting. Uh, tell me more about it. Why would you want to try this supplement or this diet? You know, just get some more information. And then it shows the athlete, oh, she actually is interested in this and, and she's interested in my goals. She, she really wants to help and really dig into it and um, realize, you know, maybe I, I need some help when it comes to food or supplementation. So I think that's first and foremost is really gain that rapport with that athlete um, or client. Um, and then from there, you can do a more in-depth assessment, and that's what we're trained to do, um, and that's doing some dietary recalls, anthrop anthropometric uh, measurements. You can do some biochemistry testing if they've done blood work, um, his health history, things of that nature to kind of get a good um, broad look at the athlete from the inside out. And then you can do your dietary changes from there, look at uh, what, what type of uh, modifications you can make. And then from there, that's where the supplementation could potentially pop in. Um, and then when supplementation is needed, it's not just saying, hey, take this, you know, every day, twice a day, um, morning, whatever. E educate what the supplement is, you know, what is it, what is it supplement, what is it supplementing, what is it going to do, why is it effective, um, tell them why it's safe. Maybe teach them a little bit about reading the labels, you know, staying away from proprietary blends and looking for that third party certification. So there is a lot of education that that can go into that. Um, and then I think lastly is for the dietitian to really stay up to date on um, the best practices for sports supplements. You know, the research is, is always evolving. And so I think it's very important for us to stay up to date on um, what the recommendations are. Um, you know, maybe there's a supplement that we thought, oh, that's trash, whatever. And then all of a sudden, all this research is, is coming out and, you know, it could be an effective supplement. And an athlete asks you about it and you're like, oh, no, that's that doesn't work. When actually the research now is saying, hey, this, this could potentially be an effective supplement of some kind. So just really staying up to date and, um, you know, continuing, continuing your education. Yeah, I really like that you... Uh made a point to draw attention to developing a relationship with your clients or with you know, your team that you're working with because they do look at you as a guidance and they do look at you as someone who you know to go for advice where what not just with supplement use but just in general but with you know their diet plan with maybe their exercise plan all, all of that information that they really do go to you for and it is really important to develop that rapport with them so that they do trust you because you know, ultimately, if they trust you, you trust them, then you're just going to work better together. Um, education, of course, like you said, is so important. Uh, we here at Informed also try to support where we can with education. So with materials like the Supplement Safety Guide, we have several blogs on our website as well, other marketing materials and videos. So feel free, everyone, to check those out. Um, they are free for you to use and to uh, use on your own, use when you're educating your athletes. Um, to really showcase why banned substance testing is important and why they need to be a bit more cautious when they are using supplements to look for something like third-party certification or watch out for proprietary blends and um, ensure that if you are a professional athlete who is subject to drug testing, that you, your supplement has been tested every single batch so that you can have 100% assurance that you know any contamination will not be there. So that is definitely something to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for other tools with athletes, you know, we're, we're on the topic of education. Uh, are there any tools that you would recommend to athletes? I have, I have one big tool that I would recommend, but uh, from just your experience, any tools that you would recommend for athletes or um, dietitians to use? Yeah. Um, I really, really appreciate Informed Sport um, creating their app. Yeah. Everybody is on their phone these days and these athletes, mm -hmm. You know, it's just a, such an easy tool. So great, great app to download on your phone um, to find if a product is certified by Informed Sport. Um, if you look at USADA, if you look at WADA, they have some good resources on the, their website. That's United States Anti-Doping Association and World Anti-Doping Association. Um, there's a website and actually Tavis Piatoli, he has a, a website and a company called My Sports Dietitian. Um, he's a local New Orleans dietitian, and 
uh, he created this along with an athletic trainer, and it's just a great, great resource, especially for high school athletes um, when it comes to diet and also supplementation. Um, the Taylor Hooten Foundation has some really great information about supplements, um, and they point out their their main one is steroids, but supplements as well. Um, the American College of Sports Medicine, they have some really great resources along with the GSSI, Gatorade Sports Science Institute. They have a multitude of resources on their website as well. So um, there are a lot of places that you can get some good quality information from. And obviously you can't can't forget, you know, meeting with a sports dietitian, they can really be a wealth of information for an athlete. Yeah, there are several organizations um, that you could uh, look at their website and find educational materials. I know if you are in the UK, UCAD is a, a wonderful resource as well, UK Anti-Doping. Um, just really, if, if you're on your own, look for those resources, um, and uh, such as Inform Sport, USADA, UCAD, uh, or if you are work, working with a dietitian, really leverage them for their knowledge and expertise because they'll point you in the right direction. Um, along the way, but uh, the the tool I would recommend, like you said, was the Informed Sport Mobile app. Um, I I've been here at Informed for nearly five years, and I remember one of our my first conversations was with you, Jamie, and you were like, "We need um, my team needs a mobile app. That's what you know. They're always on their phones. They have other um, nutrition apps on their phone. This would be something that they would love to have." And so uh, the team here really worked hard to ensure that we were able to deliver that mobile app. And so all of our certified products for Informed Sport are listed on this mobile app. Um, I believe we've had nearly 25,000 downloads so far. So it's very successful, really reaching athletes across the globe. Uh, there was something like 150 countries around the world uh, have downloaded this app. So it is, it, it's not only useful for athletes, but it's just useful for all supplement users. And uh, you can really use it in your everyday life. If you are traveling, and you're at a supplement store, you don't have any supplements, you can scan the barcode on those supplements in store. And if they are certified, it will populate the results. You'll be able to see them in real time, their batch information. And uh, there's also a sharing tool so they can share them you know, with their dietitian or with their coach or with their teammates as well to show like, hey, this, this is a trusted supplement that um, I'm gonna buy that you can also take or I'm gonna recommend to you or whatever it may be. So that's definitely a useful tool. A useful tool to have for sure yeah um, i also want to draw attention to our supplement safety guide again it's something that jamie helped me on a few years ago uh, to really flush out and make sure it was uh, a useful tool for dietitians and athletes to use um, i will be sending that to everyone um, after after this so you will be able to have that as your resource and really find a way to utilize it in your everyday work so it's definitely a useful resource uh, that i recommend everyone have um, I think that's all the questions I had. Uh, Jamie, feel free to include anything else. I do want to open the space for any questions. I do see we have uh, one question so far, but if you have any questions for Jamie or myself, uh, feel free to just drop them in the chat and we'll uh, we'll go over them. But the first question here, I, I'm not sure if you have the answer. Uh, it's a, it's a, but uh, what estimated percent of NFL players use some sort of dietary supplement? So of course, all of NFL is, that's uh, that's probably going to be our number that we can't find, but um, maybe just a roundabout number, of maybe specifically for your team, um, how many athletes would you say, uh, just average, uh, use uh, supplements or that you recommend supplements to? Um, I would say a, a good portion of these guys, Yeah. I would say the, the majority of the guys ask about supplements. Yeah. And I would say the vast majority do take at least one supplement, whether it be a protein powder or a multivitamin, fish oil, mm -hmm. um, their vitamin D, you know, we do vitamin D testing. So if they're deficient, we do provide um, a certified vitamin D uh, supplement for those mm -hmm. guys. So um, I would say up in the 95%, you know, somebody, yeah. most of these guys are taking some sort of um, dietary supplement and, mm -hmm. you know, for, for real functional reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so that really, that's a useful number uh, for not only us here in informed sport, but really for 
uh, supplement brands who are targeting these athletes with their products because if 90, 95% of a, t- a whole NFL team is using some form of supplement, that's a pretty big, you know, you multiply that by every single team that, you know, give or take a few, uh, that's a pretty big number of athletes who are looking for trusted supplements to use. So I'm sure every single dietitian in the NFL, uh, every single person on the coaching staff is going to recommend a tested supplement. Because as you said, you don't want any of those uh, consequences of inadvertent contamination to affect the team or the player themselves. So when you are, uh, for, so for any supplement brands, what are key things uh, that uh, you look for when you're recommending them for athletes? Uh, I know third-party certification is going to be one, um, but any any other things that you would uh, that you look for in a supplement brand or a product before right. you recommend it to an athlete? Yeah, yeah. The first thing I always look for is if it's if it's third party certified. So if it's not, I'm just gonna give it back to them. Or if they're showing me a picture, I'm just gonna say, hey, I'm not gonna recommend it in the first place. So you know, here you go. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, but then like when it comes to like what else do I look for? It depends on what the supplement is. Um, we talked about this earlier. If they have any proprietary blends, that's just a big mm-hmm. red flag. Anyway, uh, you don't know how much of certain ingredients are in there so you don't you don't want to you know take something where you're taking too much of a certain ingredient or you think you're getting a good um functional amount of a certain ingredient you're not getting half as much as what you need so uh, you want to make sure that those blends are not on those labels and then also the ingredients that are listed that they are you know backed by good research and science you know, you don't want certain, even if even if they're not a banned substance, why is that particular ingredient in that product? Is it going to be um, helpful in what I'm looking for? So you do have to have some good knowledge about uh, certain ingredients, certain supplements, and you know what it does for the body. Um, and that's where just our continuing education pops in um, when it comes to supplements and in- ingredients. Yeah, that's that's really good. Um, I'm trying to find, a, I had a really good question that sort of went along with uh, what you were just speaking about. Give me one second. Um, it says, what do you think of superfood blends that are not tested? Could these be contaminated? Superfood blends, I'm assuming, is just another term for proprietary blends. Um, so I'll, I'll take this one and just know that they, they could be contaminated. Um, if they are not being produced in a facility that uh, does not have any banned substances, or if they are if they are produced in a facility that makes product with banned substances, if they are not um, if they are not segregated uh, correctly, then there is also a risk for contamination there. Uh, many times with proprietary blends, even the manufacturer or the brand themselves may not know there's a banned substance in there. A lot of banned substances do occur naturally. So it could be in the actual raw materials that they are using to make this proprietary blend. So it's right. definitely important to have a third party certification because it looks at all of that. It looks at those raw materials. It looks at the manufacturing process. And of course it looks at the uh, ingredients in the product and tests those every single batch. So to really make sure that it is a well-rounded product from beginning to end. Right. And they yeah. may be talking about maybe like a greens powder if they're saying super yeah. food. That, that, oh. That's the first thing that came to my mind. And in my mind, yeah. that is a supplement. And so it's going to go through some sort of factory. It's going to go through, you know, it, it's all turned into some sort of powder um, and just a lot of ingredients in one. So that is a supplement. I, If someone wants to take it, I would only look for a certified product and then also tell them this does not substitute for your daily vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> um, I see that as kind of a multivitamin type yeah. drink or powder. Um, so maybe just kind of filling in some gaps, but that's not um, your, however, nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Um, yeah. Just That's just an addition. Yeah. Another good question here is, um, it looks like uh, they said that for athletes who do not use third party tested supplements, they included a statistic here, 20 to 50% of athletes. Um, what 
would you recommend to other professionals on to encourage these uh, them to encourage their athletes to use uh, third-party tested supplements I know like as you mentioned previously education is a huge huge thing so any recommendations on how to really navigate that to ensure that they are um, using supplements that are tested by a third party right um, I think the best tactic is give them examples of high profile athletes that have taken supplements and unknowingly you know ingest a banned substance Mm -hmm. And so some of these like top athletes that had to miss games or whatever their um, consequence was, you know, that can really hit home for some, especially young athletes who are just wanting to take this and that because they it think they think they're, it's going to make them a better athlete. Mm -hmm. um, so just giving good real life examples of what can happen, um, both for eligibility and then also some some health health reasons, too. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I'm reading another question here. It's a pretty lengthy one, so I'm going to read it word for word to make sure I get it all. Um, it's to you, Jane. How do you feel about using products with a nutrition facts label without banned substance testing? I know people are okay if it has the nutrition facts label. So um, I guess basically what it's saying, how do you feel about just because it has a nutrition facts label, is it okay to uh, recommend to athletes or does it need to have some type of certification by a third party on there to really um, provide that extra level of assurance? Yeah, this is a, always a big discussion amongst dietitians, especially like during conferences and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like if it's, if it is a supplement, if it's like a, I don't know, say a fish oil, which may have some calories in there um, and has a nutrition facts label, we know that is a supplement. So I would recommend something like that, making, even though it might have a nutrition facts label, not a supplement label, still to have a third party um, mm -hmm. testing. Um, same thing with like protein powders. Those, mm -hmm. in my mind, they're, they're supplements. They're, they are supplementing um, protein for your diet and they're probably not being, most likely not being regulated through FDA purposes. Now, I do know that some companies do go through the FDA um, mm -hmm. route. And so, again, that's where it kind of gets a little confusing. Um, but anything in my mind, and this is just me, if it's a powder form, a pill form, a shot, or whatever it may be, I'm always going to look to make sure that it's certified just to be safe, just to be safe. Because mm -hmm. unless you're like going to the facility and seeing how it's made and making sure that it's going through the whole FDA food process, you know, you really don't know. So mm -hmm. um, I'm always on the safe side. More conservative. Yeah, and it, it goes back to um, may, not believing what you read on the label, because even though the nutrition facts may lay out all of the, you know, calorie information, what you're getting out of the product and even the ingredients at the bottom there, there's the, if it does not have any third party certification, it, there is still a huge potential of it being inadvertently contaminated with some type of banned substance. Like I, I keep saying it through the manufacturing process or even through the actual, you know, getting the raw materials to make the product. There, uh, there's just, there are too many avenues where contamination could occur that just because it is, you know, just has a nutrition facts label doesn't uh, automatically mean it is like uh, certified or safe to use. You know, you really need to look for the extra level of assurance. Yeah. yeah, there's another, I think this is our last question. I'm gonna make sure, hold on, give me one second here. It says, uh, it's really going back on proprietary blends that we were speaking of first. Um, and it says, what if manufacturers submit their product for third party testing? That there are instances where a manufacturer, if it is the actual supplement brands manufacturing their product, they can submit it for testing. But um, we do like here at Inform Sport, we test every single batch and look at every single ingredient. In, in proprietary blends, we, we do require every ingredient within that blend to be listed so that we can review and ensure uh, 
that there are not banned substances within that product. So that is just the extra level of assurance that we do here at Informed Sport. Um, and I'm sure that you would you know, suggest the same thing if you were looking at a supplement yourself, really um, you know, ensuring that if it is a proprietary blend, that it is being thoroughly looked at to make sure it's a well-rounded product. Right. So if it is a product that has a proprietary blend and is third-party certified, I would, yes, it may be free of banned substances, but then you're looking at, okay, I still don't know how much exactly of these ingredients are in there. So I would rather recommend a product that lists out the quantities of each ingredient instead of one big paragraph of what's in it. So um, mm -hmm. that's my advice to supplement brands and companies is if you do have a proprietary blend list is mm -hmm. list how much of that is in that blend because mm -hmm. there are, um, I, like I said, there are um, amounts of certain ingredients for, for it to be actual, actually functional. Um, for it to actually do what it's supposed to do so and then i believe this might be the final question i thank you all so much for submitting your questions this is uh providing a great resource for us to be able to share some more information um, this question says is there a universal definition for supplement batch testing within the anti-doping context um i would say that here at inform sport when we say supplement batch testing we are saying every single batch is being tested for banned substances. Um, not every third-party certification program in the world does that. Informed Sport takes that extra level of quality assurance to make sure every single batch is tested. And along with that, the manufacturer is reviewed and the ingredients list is reviewed as well. And then once you know, certification is awarded to the product and to the brand, we continue to do blind sample testing to ensure the integrity of that product. Um, and just so that, that means that we are buying it from an actual retail store, whether it's online or in person, and then we are testing it ourselves to once again, ensure that what is being sold on the market is, uh, is safer for athletes to use. I'm gonna do a quick review of all the questions again, just to make sure Oh, and then we have another good one. Can you explain the difference between informed sport and informed choice? Yeah, so the only difference between informed sport and informed choice, um, I guess I should go back and say informed sport and informed choice are our quality assurance programs here at Inform. So they really analyze banned substances, and that is um, what those two programs were developed for. So testing products for banned substances to ensure that athletes and all supplement users um, have you know more clarity when they are purchasing supplements. So the only difference between these two programs is the testing, uh, I guess the te testing regimen. Informed Sport is every single batch is tested before it's being sold to market. So when you see Informed Sport on a product label in a store, you know that every single batch of that product has been tested before it went on the shelf. Informed Sport, uh, exact same testing process um, the only difference is that it is a routine, uh, routinely monitored program. So it is done by way of uh, blind sample testing uh, on a monthly basis. And um, so that, again, it provides that level of assurance to supplement users. But for athletes who are subject to very strict doping protocols, they need the every batch testing program to really, we don't say 100%, but to thoroughly ensure that what they are taking is safer for them to use for their health and for um, their career prospects as well. So that's the that's the only difference between the two. Um, we do have a very useful article as well on our website that explains it a bit more in depth, but uh, that is the main difference between informed sport and informed choice. And then I think that was our last, our last question there. Um, if you have any further questions, feel free to send them in. Uh, you can also send them via email. Um, I'll be glad to answer them as well. And if there's anything for Jamie specifically, I'll forward it onto, onto her so she can um, help you answer that too. So, but I wanna thank you so much, Jamie, for joining us today. Thank you so much for agreeing to this webinar. And really, uh, it's really useful, um, especially here at Informed. I talk about how, you know, banned substance testing and 
really driving home why it's important, but it's very useful to have an actual person within the industry um, with as much experience as you have to really share that knowledge of, again, why it's important to the industry itself um, and a bit more insight in that way. So thank you. Yes, thank you. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that concludes today's webinar. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, you will all be receiving our supplement safety guide after this. Um, and uh, if there's any questions, just feel free to let us know and have a good day. Awesome. Bye-bye.